We've been working so far with expressions as the fundamental building blocks of OCaml programs. Now let's look at a second kind of building block, which is a definition. A definition lets us give a name to a value. This is essentially the notion of a variable from other programming languages, except that the variable's value can't change. So for example, we could say let x equal 42. We get a response back from UTOP, and now x means 42. So let's take a close look at that response again. Again, let's start by reading it right to left. Let x equals 42. What did that result in? It resulted in a value 42 whose type was int, and it is bound to the name x. That's what the val x there means. So now if I read it left to right, I've got a value named x, which has type int, and is equal to 42. And when I evaluate x itself at the next prompt, what do I get back? I've got 42, and it's just an int. 42 itself uh, is the value of that variable x. x is the name, 42 is the value. I could have other values, so I could say let y of uh, type int if I wanted. I could put the type annotation in. In fact, uh, I am allowed but not required to put the parentheses in in this type annotation. Let y of type int equal 3110. All right, so now I've got a value y of type int, which is 3110. Uh, but the compiler could have figured out that type for me. I didn't need to annotate it. And in fact, in this limited instance, in a let definition, I don't even have to put the parentheses in. The syntax here is sufficiently limited that the compiler can figure out what I'm saying without those parentheses. So y is 3110. And now that I have two of them, I can say things like x plus y, which is now 3152. Uh, I think that's especially interesting because you take these two really great integers already, 3110 and 42, you add them together, and you get the number of the game design course. That's pretty cool. Now that we've taken an intuitive look at let definitions, let's step back and examine them a little more carefully. So definitions are a way of giving a name to a value, but definitions are not expressions, nor are expressions definitions. You can see that in the Venn diagram here, in which they are completely distinct classes of syntax in OCaml. All right, so you can't take a definition and treat it as an expression or vice versa. Nonetheless, definitions do syntactically contain expressions. Right? In our previous examples, we were writing down integer values as part of definitions. Those are themselves expressions. So the syntax of a let definition is just let x equal e, where x here is standing for an identifier. So OCaml has rules for forming identifiers. You might think of these as variable names. And they're very similar to the rules for identifiers from other languages. You can look them up in the manual. Uh, they do have to start with lowercase letters for these let definitions. Uh, later on, we'll see some examples of identifiers that start with uppercase letters as well. But OCaml is actually particular about that. You will get error messages if you try to start uh, one of these identifiers with an uppercase letter. The E here is any other expression that you might want it to be, according to any of the other expression rules we've seen so far or that we will see later. To evaluate a let definition, this is the dynamic semantics recall, first evaluate the expression E to a value V, then bind V to X. So bind here means associate with. Associate the value v with the name x. Henceforth, x will evaluate to v. Always. It's immutable. It's always going to evaluate to that. If you like to think about things less in terms of math and more in terms of like what's going on with the hardware under the hood, what's really happening here is we're getting a new memory location we're going to name that location x, and we're going to store the value v at it. Or I put that in terms of humans. Really, it's the machine is going to do this. The machine is going to allocate a new memory location, use the name x for it, and store the value v in it. As for 
The let definition itself, it does not count as an expression. So you cannot use let x equal e as a sub-expression of something else. In UTOP, for example, you could not say let z equal 1 plus 2. Okay, the let z equals 1 is a definition. It binds a value to a name. It does not have a value itself. You are not allowed to use it in a context in which a value is expected, which is to say as an expression. So you try to compile that, you're going to get a syntax error here. It's saying an operator was expected. It doesn't understand how to parse that let definition when you've used it as an expression. If you do want to be able to use a let definition as an expression, there is a way to do that, and we will see it next.